If you're somebody who's been trying to sell AI agents and automations to businesses, then you've realized that there is a huge disparity between what racks up views on social media and what people actually buy. And that's because these overcomplicated flashy workflows that do numbers on YouTube don't actually accomplish what businesses are trying to achieve. And that's to provide value. Clients and businesses do not care how many nodes your workflow has, how complicated it is, how many outside AI resources it's using. They just care if it's going to drive revenue, bring in more clients, or save them time in some manner. And as someone who's been running their own AI agency for over a year now, this is a pattern that I have seen again and again and again. And because of that, the lion's share of automations and agents that I have sold fall under one of four categories. Rag agents, lead generation automations, voice agents, or content creation automations. So in today's video, we are gonna go through those four types of AI agents, and I'm gonna explain what they are, how they work, and how you can create them yourself. And as a bonus, if you stick around till the end, I'm gonna show you how to get all the templates that you see in today's video for free. So with that, let's get started. So like I talked about in the intro, we're gonna be going over the four types of AI solutions that clients actually buy. And for each of these solutions, I'm gonna be talking about three different things. The first one is what it actually does. The second is how I've seen clients actually use these solutions. And the third is gonna be what you should be thinking about as someone who actually builds these AI agents and automations. And as we go through this video, you're gonna see a bunch of links pop up that are for videos that actually deep dive each of these solutions if you want more information about that particular one. So let's kick this off by talking about RAG agents. And RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, means I have some sort of AI agent connected to a vector database. Now a vector database is just a fancy term for a database that works really well with large language models. And this database acts as essentially a giant knowledge base for your AI agent. So think of a custom GPT with all of these files you fed it, but on steroids, right? Instead of only being able to feed it like five, 10 files, you can feed it thousands, okay? That's what an AI agent is. And what it buys the client is you now essentially have this AI system, this chat GPT thing that can act as a member of the team because, hey, I want this AI system to be a part of our project, to be part of an organization. Well, now I'm gonna feed it our best practices, our SOPs, our emails, what's going on in our current situation, right? And now that AI agent has all that context and can leverage it in whatever manner you want. That's what it buys the client. Now these RAG agents could come in a bunch of different forms. This could be a chatbot on a website. This could be a Slack bot. This could also be something that just lives in your email, which is what I had one client do. He wanted a RAG agent that was essentially a clone of him. So we fed the, so we fed the vector database everything about this guy, right? Hundreds of his previous emails, best practices for his company, SOPs, their mission statement, everything, right? It was hundreds and hundreds of documents. And the idea was, now that he had this AI clone of him, it would respond to all of his emails. It would draft up all of his responses, which is exactly what it did, saving him hours every week. That's just one example. And just as the RAG agent can look like a bunch of different things, the RAG architecture itself can also be extremely buried because the RAG waters are extremely deep, right? What you're looking at here is an example of graph RAG. What you see here is a gentic RAG. What we've been looking at this whole time is just very, very basic naive RAG, right? It actually can get relatively complicated. So understand once you start learning about RAG, like there's a lot that goes into it. Now, from the client's point of view, there isn't nearly <laughs> much that goes into it at all. All they need to do is they need to A, have a place where they can give the vector database documents and B, some place to talk to it, right? We've spoken about this, where to talk to it, Slack, email, whatever, but you are gonna have to give the client some place to you know, store documents, right? They want the AI agent to have this knowledge, these emails, these SOPs, whatever. How do they do that? Well, all they need to do is they just need to go to somewhere like Google Drive and have a folder that automatically ingests all that data, like you see here, into the system, right? Very easy for the client. Now, what about you? What do you need to be thinking about when it comes to all these RAG systems? You need to spend a bunch of time thinking about it needs to be agentic, does it need to be graph? Kind of, but not really. The big hurdle when it comes to RAG agents is data. Now, what do I mean by data? Really two parts to it. The first part is the data ingestion piece, right? Not just like where do they put the documents they want, but like what are those documents? Now, this is something that's ever changing. Understand that, right? As time goes on, you're starting to see more like multimodal RAG systems, which means they can take videos, they can take pictures, and they can actually understand that and turn that into a vector. But most of the systems you'll deal with, especially first, are gonna be text-based 
only, right? So they need like Google Docs or PDFs that are text, not scans. So that's the first thing, like, is it text? Is it a data system it can actually hold? The second thing is going to be, well, what does that data actually look like? You know, if you give it a thousand documents that has conflicting information or isn't titled correctly, right? And it's just like ugly and garbage. Well, garbage in, garbage out, your RAG system will reflect that. So make sure the data on the front end is A, organized and B, text. Secondly, is gonna be data syncing. And you kind of see that right here. What happens when a client deletes a document for Google, from Google Drive or changes a document in Google Drive, right? What's gonna happen then? What are we going to do? Well, you need some sort of system that can deal with that. And this is not something a lot of people talk about. They just show you the RAG system it puts inside the information. Well, in the real world, things change, right? I don't want my AI agent to have data that is old or conflicting. It defeats the whole purpose. So you need to think about data on the back end, some sort of cleanup system that can make sure A, deleted documents in Google Drive are deleted inside the database, and B, what happens if we change a document, right? You need to have these answers and it needs to work every single time. So that's the RAG systems in the nutshell. The sell to the client is this is an AI agent that now can become a member of your team and have full context, same as any team member. And for you, data, 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 how is it organized? How are you cleaning it up? So let's move to AI solution number two, and that's lead generation automations. The ROI on these is clear. I am giving you an automation that brings you, the client, more clients. Very simple sell. That's it. Now, how do these actually work? What do they need? Well, they really need four things. First of all, they need some sort of lead source. What you're looking at right here is a Google Maps scraper. So our lead source in this case is Google Maps, right? We're going to the Google Maps. We're scraping all the data from there, right? That's the lead source. The second thing it needs is some sort of enrichment, right? So I got the data from Google Maps, but as you know, there's not enough there, right? I probably need some more information. So in this case, this simple Google Maps scraper just uses Tably. This could be Perplexity. This could be SERP API. This could be a Google search. Any way where I can take the leads I found from my source and get some more information, right? This will change depending on the client, depending on the source, their industry, whatever. But that's part two of any robust lead generation automation. Number three is the custom messaging, right? Because they're gonna to wanna to do some outreach, right? Whether that ends up being a DM on LinkedIn or a large scale cold email campaign, we need a way to take all that data we found from both the enrichment phase and the sourcing phase and turn it into some sort of custom messaging so we don't sound like, you know, some AI blast to 10,000 people and it's very, very generic, even though that's exactly what it is, right? You need some way to customize it. So it sounds like the email is a one of one, right? That's the goal, that's the North Star. And then the fourth thing is, can we then put this, all this information, right? The data we scrape, the data we enrich, the custom messaging, can we push that to some sort of platform where we can now conduct our outreach campaign? Now, if you're doing something like cold email, right? A great one is instantly, and that's what happens here, right? All that data gets pushed to instantly, so then you can go onto a platform that's actually built for cold email outreach, or maybe it's like LinkedIn DM, right? You need, you need to be able to push that data one place. So it's not just living inside of like a Google sheet or something. Now, what you see here is a Google Maps version. What you see here is something that uses Apollo. Now this uses the old Appify Apollo scraper. So this is a little older, but this could be replaced with like Apollo's actual API or Clay's actual API. It all, it all remains the same. Source leads, enrich leads, custom messaging, and then push it to a platform so you can actually outsource, right? Those are the four things every lead generation needs and how clients actually use them just depends on the industry, right? You can have the exact same, you know, automation here for one client versus the other. The things that are gonna change are the custom messaging, like what do they need to hear and where you're gonna find the enrichment, right? For many times it can just be something that's online, but in other cases there's like, very specific resources for the enrichment and the data they want. Now, what do you need to be thinking about as someone actually creating these workflows for the client? Well, the two biggest things are gonna be A, where do we source the leads, right? Is it just something generic like Apollo? Like, hey, we're just trying to find, you know, marketing directors across the country and companies that are, you know, two to 500 people? Or is it something a lot more specific, right? Like I did lead generation for one client who was targeting specific people on YouTube right? And he wanted to filter based on the amount of views they were getting in a specific niche and find them that way. You know, that's where stuff is going to change. The second thing that's going to change is the actual messaging, right? The actual message we generate. This is largely going to be on the client themselves, but it's on you to be able to extract what they're trying to say and combine it with all the data you found, 
right? So this is definitely like a, a team effort when it comes to the messaging because everyone has their own message, but you're the person who takes all that data and actually turns it into a deliverable. Now let's talk about our third AI solution and that's AI voice agents. They come in two forms, inbound, so think receptionist, and then two, outbound, think like a sales rep following up on leads. Now, each of these you A, need to understand, but B, there's sort of three parts to all of them. The first part is gonna be like the phone number. That's something you can set up via like Twilio. The second is the actual tools involved. So think of our receptionist, right? I want it to be able to check availability, get user bookings, book appointment, modify appointment, whatever. This changes, but we set that up inside of N8N. And then the third thing we need to do is actually set up the call logic, set up the voicing, right? How do we do that? Well, we usually use something like Eleven Labs or Vapi. So you actually need to go outside of N8N and introduce some of these external tools. Now the cell for these is pretty simple, right? You have an AI system that either replaces or augments an employee. Now think of the receptionist, even if they aren't replacing the receptionist, what happens for after hours? What if you actually want something a little more dynamic than just sending everything to voicemail, right? This is where this comes in and they're relatively cheap versus an employee. The other big sell for these is how easy they are to integrate into things like CRM. In our outbound example, I had a client that wanted leads followed up on immediately. So they had a web page, the client would fill out the potential lead, would fill out their information, right? Name, phone number, et cetera. And then this voice agent, once all that information came in and they got through the base level qualification stage, it would immediately follow up a call and confirm some information. And that CRM setup is very simple to do. Again, you see inside of here, inside of N8N, in this case, it's using Google Sheets, but this could be anything, right? Whatever, HubSpot, for example, whatever system you want, it can integrate into it. And these integrations are what you, the builder has to actually think about because these tools, check availability, get user bookings, book appointment, these can be anything and every single client's gonna kinda want a different spin on it. And also they're probably gonna have some weird CRM system that you've never even heard of that you're gonna have to deal with. That's where you're gonna spend most of your time, like dealing with the, you know, little idiosyncrasies of whatever like third-party system they wanna integrate into the voice agent. And this changes from client to client. The other thing you're gonna have to think about is the actual call logic and how the voice sounds and dealing with latency. And all of that is a battle you're gonna fight inside of 11 Labs. But voice agents are huge. There are entire agencies where this is just the only thing they sell. So definitely have this in your toolbox. Now, last but not least, content automations. And out of the four, this is the one I think that's getting the most hype recently and no small part due to things like Sora 2 and VO 3.1 because the video is getting really, really good and it's only getting better. Now, what are content generation automations? Well, I consider anything that has to do with generating content from a marketing sense, from a commercial perspective, as something that falls under this umbrella, right? And for a lot of businesses, especially smaller, medium-sized ones, marketing, special social media marketing, isn't necessarily a place that they are putting a bunch of resources in. They're not hiring a ton of people to do it. So naturally, they look for AI to fill that gap, which is where you come in. And again, these take a bunch of different forms, everything from like social media scrapers, which go out and actually find marketing data to bring back to the client, to automations that actually generate videos, especially in UGC. UGC is one I have seen a ton and done work on with clients, all the way to very simple automations that just generate LinkedIn posts, right? It's the full gambit. And because it's so wide ranging, you actually need to know how to create quite a bit when it comes to content. You do need to understand how to do the simple stuff like LinkedIn post generators, but you also need to understand how to integrate things like Sora 2 and VO3 into automations that no kidding create AI video content for businesses. So what do you, the actual builder, need to think about when it comes to these AI content automations? Well, I think what you need to know more than anything is their limitations. When it comes to content, especially if they're talking about, hey, I wanna do UGC, I wanna do full AI videos, you need to make it very, very clear to them what makes sense to automate and what doesn't. And the thing is, what makes sense and what doesn't is something that's changing every couple of weeks. You can automate UGC videos, but in that automation process, you have to be very, very strict about something like prompt generation and your messaging. And also you need to know that these aren't things that you can necessarily one shot. If you have an automation that creates videos for the client, great, but you're probably gonna have to create three, four, five, six, seven, and then they manually choose which one they like because there's a lot of AI crap out there that looks terrible. And if you go to a client and you say, hey, this is gonna work, I'm gonna create this UGC automation for you, whatever, it's probably gonna suck if you aren't very, very deliberate about how the AI content creation process is actually being executed. You cannot automate everything. 
You just can't, especially when it comes to stuff that's visual. It's just going to look bad. So knowing where those limitations are and how they're changing is something that's going to change client to client, but you must make it clear to them because if you try to sell them a bill of goods um, and you're going to say, hey, this is going to look great and it doesn't, you're going to be in for a bad time. And again, it's something that's always changing. So you really need to be up to date on like which AI video tools are best, which AI image tools are best and how to use them, like an actual proper workflow. So out of all of these, the content stuff definitely requires the most finesse. So those are the four types of AI automations and workflows that I have found actually sell. And I hope this video was able to not only shed light on what those workflows look like, but more importantly, the types of hurdles you're going to face in the real world when you actually try to implement these for clients, because not a lot of people talk about that. Now, I also promised you that I would show you how to get all the templates you found in this video. If you go down in the comments and hit the first link, the free Chase AI School, it will bring you here. If you go to the classroom, you can find all the templates here in the template section. You can also search for them using the search bar and you will find all the templates as well as guides of how to use them inside of here. Now, if you're someone who wants to learn more about the AI agency stuff, definitely check out Chase AI Plus. There's a link to that in the comments as well. That has a way heavier focus on like, hey, you want to start your own AI agency? Here's how you do it from day zero all the way to landing your first client. So definitely check us out if that's something that would interest you.